Woman's History Month. This video is going to tell you why Jesus is actually the most pro-woman individual who's ever lived in history, more than any other religious figure, if I might say. The first passage we're going to look at today is John 4, okay? Because I want to show you how Jesus was so different and how pro-woman he was. Because you might hear people say, oh, Christianity, that's such a man's religion, patriarchal, blah, blah, blah. That's all nonsense. Jesus loves women. God made male and female. They both express God in different ways. Both are equal, okay? Different roles, I believe. Different roles. Women are better at things and guys are better at things. We all have our strengths, strengths and weaknesses. But the whole point of this video is to show you how much God loves women. This is a really great passage. So Jesus in the Samaritan woman, you might've heard of this story. So I'm not going to go through all of it, but what we see here is Jesus going to a place called Samaria. Okay. The Jews and Samaritans, they hated each other. They did. Okay. They didn't have anything to do with each other. And usually when someone would go past Samaria, Samaria, uh, Jews would actually take this huge long way around the city to get to their destination. Okay, then having to go through the city to get to, the, to get to their destination that was a way more direct route. But just because they had so much animosity towards each other, so this woman was at this well. Okay, Jacob's well. Okay, we know Jacob from the Old Testament. Um, Jacob literally what became named Israel. Okay. So he was with his disciples, right? And he went off and he went to this well. Okay. He was tired from his walk. And I believe Jesus went to this well specifically to meet this one woman. Soon a woman came to drew, drew, draw water from this well. And Jesus said, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? So first off, just to let you know, women and men, like Jewish men would one, not associate with a Samaritan, but two, a woman, the, the respect, respectable, the respectable woman of the town, sorry, I can't speak. Respectable woman of the town would be out in the morning getting water from this well, not the daytime. And, a, uh, a, especially not a rabbi, but a man wouldn't be alone during the daytime speaking to a woman like this. So she was shocked first and foremost. Um, so a lot of cultural kind of um, traditions were being broken here. And that's the thing. Jesus wasn't just crucified um, because he was like a great teacher. He broke the traditions of those days because he was saying, hey, like, it's not about these traditions. It's about me. I am God. I come to bring forgiveness. The kingdom of God is at hand. So here we go. And Jesus actually, just so there's no confusion, Jesus came to fulfill the Old Testament law. He even said that. That's where I got it from. Jesus said, if you only knew the gift that God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. And basically it goes on to say, she's like, but you don't have a bucket, this and that. And he says, if you drink from me, you'll have eternal life, right? She said, give me this water. I'll never be thirsty again. So he says, go and get your husband. And he knew this lady didn't have this. He knew that this lady had multiple husbands or she'd been divorced multiple times. She said, I don't have a husband, right? And for a woman just it, it, to be in the Old Testament, right? And to be Old Testament, but to be, this was like over 2000 years ago, this took place, right? For a woman to be divorced back in those days, she was like a total outcast. Like you don't even know, total just really sad. Like no one would want to associate with this woman, but not Jesus. Jesus came to seek and save those who are lost. Okay. The people in need, that's who Jesus came for. Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband. You had five husbands. You aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You spoke the truth. She basically says, you're a prophet. I can't believe you said this, blah, blah, blah. And basically this woman goes into town and um, even the disciples, why are you talking to a woman? Like they were shocked. Um, but that's just one of the quick stories I'm going to share with you today, showing that Jesus did what people were afraid to do because he saw this woman and he knew because he's God before he even met her, that she was hurting and that no one in her society, like there was no more um, chances for her. She ran out of her chances, right? Like 
That was it. That was how she was going to be labeled to the day she died. So you might in your life be labeled certain ways. People have said things over your life. You're never going to do this. You're going to be this. You're going to be that. Well, Jesus, I just want to tell you today, this is just a side note. Jesus takes those labels and he breaks them and he calls you a child of God. Okay. If you believe in Jesus Christ, confess your sins, follow him. You're adopted into the family of God. You're a daughter. You're a son of God. You're not whatever someone has tell, told you before in your past or what they're telling you now. Block that noise out because it's not true. And this is more beautiful passages. Okay. Woman caught in adultery. This is honestly one of my most f- uh, favorite passages, probably in history. Um, <laughs> history. A woman caught in adultery. Basically, you could look this up, okay? I'll summarize it in John 8. This woman was caught in adultery, okay? And the law of Moses says to stone her. This was a bunch of religious teachers, right? Coming to stone this lady. If you don't know what stoning means, it means throwing rocks at her. She was sentenced to death, okay? And they were all trying to sentence this woman to death because in their law, you know, sexual immorality was a real crime. Okay. It's not like it is today where everyone just does not I'm not saying this is right. Obviously this is wrong. And that's why Jesus says this. Okay. So what Jesus says this, all right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Okay. After that, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest until Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Did one of them condemn you? Even one? No, Lord, she said, neither do I go sin and no, neither do I go and sin no more. So powerful, right? He tells them, Hey, you think like she's such an awful sinner, right? She's broken this huge law. Throw a stone. If like none of you guys have sinned. Okay. If you're without sin, throw the first stone, basically saying you're judging her for her getting caught in adultery But have you not sinned before? So Jesus came just to break traditions and break um, what the religious people of the day thought and, and basically say, like, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Like, it's not about being perfect. And that's what you need to know today. It's, it, today. it's not, yes, we want to follow Jesus as close as possible, but we're going to make mistakes. We're going to break one of the Ten Commandments because we're sinners. And Jesus was saying, hey, it's not about being perfect. I am perfect. I am God. I am sinless. I am that spotless lamb of David. And you have to not work for your salvation like the religious leaders were doing. Work, everything was works based, right? He was saying, no, you just need to trust and have faith in me. Okay. And that's powerful. The last thing I want to show you why Jesus is such a champion for women. Real quick, Jesus, okay, dies, resurrects again, okay. And then, Guess who met Jesus, okay? Mary, the mother of James, Salome, they went out so they could anoint Jesus' body with oil, okay? When they entered the tomb, blah, 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 blah. They saw a young man clothed in white robe. I just want to get to the point for you. Basically, an angel said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He isn't here. He rose from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. This is powerful, okay? And for a few reasons. Back in those days, women, they didn't have, like, in, in public matters, they couldn't be a public witness. So, and you could look at, like, Jewish historians like jo- Josephus, wrote that it would require, even if it was multiple women saying this about uh, Jesus being risen from the dead, right? Like it still wasn't acceptable. So it's super crazy that Jesus, the first, the first person who saw Jesus raised from the dead were women. The first people who knew, okay, not men. Okay. And this was a very male dominated society. It was women. The first evangelist, I heard a pastor say this, the first evangelist were women in the Bible because who went to the disciples, all the men who were actually hiding and they were scared in the upper room because Jesus had just been crucified. The women weren't scared. Okay. The women weren't scared. The women were out wanting to anoint Jesus's body with the oil. Where were the men? They were hiding in the upper room. They were hiding. Okay, and the women were the first evangelists to say, hey, good news, Jesus isn't there anymore. He rose. So 
really powerful. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure if you want to get this unedited version of this live stream that I do live, it's only for my Patreon members, so go down below. And also, there's a Discord server, lots of perks if you sign up for the Patreon. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe.